Behold Your King. The title of this program is Jesus of Nazareth. Welcome, Jew and Gentile. I, Evangelist Gloria Marjorie, bless you in the name of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Beloved, do we really know this man who walked on this earth without sin? Beloved, Jesus was God in the flesh, 100% human and 100% divine, holy and majestic. Do we really know this man who when the sea was raging and the wind and waves was wild and stormy, said to the wind and to the sea, Peace, be still. And immediately there was a great calm, and the wind and the sea obeyed. Those in the boat with Jesus were astonished, and they said, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And he shall be called a Nazarene. Quote Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. End quote. Beloved, let us now take a listen how the prophets told of Jesus coming and where he would be born. Quoting Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from everlasting. End quote. Beloved, this prophecy tells us Jesus would be, would be born in Bethlehem, and as well, most importantly, Jesus always was God from everlasting. Wow, how amazing and marvelous is Jesus, our Lord. Beloved, the prophet Isaiah prophesied these facts about Jesus, our Lord, 700 years before the Messiah would come to the earth for his great commission. And what was that, beloved? It was to die for us and take all our punishment. So let us take a listen to the prophet Isaiah who prophesied about his birth and his crucifixion. Quoting Isaiah chapter 7 verses 10 through 14. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear you now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. End quotes. Beloved, this speaks about the Virgin Mary or Miriam in the Hebrew, who was to give birth to the son of the highest, who would be Emmanuel. This name Emmanuel means God with us. So, when the angel Gabriel came to this virgin and told this wonderful news, Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She was saying, I have never had sex with a man. The angel replied and said, With God, nothing shall be impossible. Then the virgin said to the angel, Be it done unto me according to thy word. Mary lived in Nazareth, but the prophet Micah said, Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Beloved, let us take a listen to how Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Ju Judah and not in Nazareth. Quoting the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Quoting now, beloved, Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that they went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the Lord Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa. She was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all these things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, 
filled with wisdom and the grace of God is upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all they that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why is thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wist you not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. Here ends the quotes in Luke chapter 2. And now, beloved, more of what the prophets prophesied about Jesus our Lord before Jesus was born, which is very important because they prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was born. As we have heard, his birth was nothing short of miraculous. Quoting Isaiah chapter 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. End quotes. Wow, beloved, the prophet is describing about the Son of God who would be born to the Virgin Mary. We see that Jesus is God, for the prophet says he is the mighty God and the everlasting Father. He is a wonderful counselor, also the Prince of Peace. Jesus did say, My peace I leave with you, but not as the world gives, give I unto you. Beloved, take unto yourself the peace of God that passes all understanding. If you will really do that, how then will you suffer anxiety? No, you won't, beloved. Fear is the opposite of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is a good thing to trust in Jesus, because Jesus promises does not return void. Just do it, beloved. Oh, beloved, God is so good and so kind. Beloved, now let us examine some more of the prophecies given before Jesus was born. Quoting now Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace 
was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before a shearer is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Here ends the chapter. Beloved, the prophet is describing the crucifixion of Christ our Lord. He tells of the passion of the Christ as well. The prophet starts out saying, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You, me, all of us will believe the word of God. The word of God says, Thy word is truth. Amen to that. Beloved, take a listen to how King David prophesied about the passion of the Christ. Even some of what Jesus said, this was hundreds of years before they even crucified people. Quoting now Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted that thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot at the lip. They shake the head saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have come past me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. But thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. 
deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. You that fear the Lord, praise him. All you the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All you the seed of Israel, for he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. End quotes, beloved. Beloved, these prophecies is so mind-blowingly accurate. The Romans were masters of brutality. Beloved, do you think the soldiers who were so terribly cruel to Jesus, do you think they would say to each other, guys, we are going to do to Jesus what King David prophesied, such as part his garments and cast lots upon his vesture, etc.? No, beloved, big time no. Those Roman soldiers did not know the Hebrew scriptures and they did not care. Yet, without knowing the scriptures, they did to Jesus all that King David had prophesied hundreds of years before this. This in itself is so amazing, beloved. Here in some of the prophecies prophesied by the prophets concerning our Lord, such as where he would be born and how he would die for us, being the sinless Passover sacrificial lamb of God without blemish or spot, whose blood would be the atonement for our sins. In other words, he would take our punishment. So when we receive the blood of Jesus for our sins and receive him as our Lord, we would have eternal life in heaven and not spend eternity in the darkness and terror of hell. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Beloved, let us take a listen to how Satan tried to tempt Jesus, quoting Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it may be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed him unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, 
He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and they went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me, This proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily, I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of the truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogues, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up, and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill, whereon the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this for with authority and power? He commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had sick at the all sorry, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. 
And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Here ends the reading. So, beloved, when the devil tried to tempt Jesus, Jesus used scriptures to defeat the devil. Afterward, Jesus cast the devil out of the man because the man had a spirit of an unclean devil. Jesus is omniscient. He knows everything. Jesus is all-powerful, omnipotent. No power can ever come against the power of God. Jesus is omnipresent. This means... This means you can't hide from Jesus. He knows where you are all the time. He knows what you are thinking all the time. Some of us are mean and cruel, yet he still loves you and waits for you to repent. Beloved, let us take into our minds some of the teachings of Jesus. And I'll just go back and forth. Quotes now, beloved, out of the Gospel of John. But first, let us take a listen to how the Apostle John introduces the Messiah to us like this. Reading now the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to be witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of, of sorry, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me and of his fullness have always received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who? Art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they, Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered him, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. 
The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John B. records, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and be record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek you? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Year after you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the reading. So now, beloved, some of the teaching of Jesus. As I said, I will just go back and forth. When the Jews asked Jesus to show them a sign, seeing that he does those things, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body, but they understood not. But his disciples, when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, remembered that he had said these things unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now, let us listen to what Jesus teaches us in the Gospel of John chapter 3 through verse 21. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God said, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten, begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Here in the reading, beloved. Beloved, the Jewish leaders were always trying to find something in order to condemn Jesus and they wanted to prove that Jesus was not the Son of God. Take a listen, beloved, to the Gospel of John chapter 8. Quoting now, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, 
thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto him, Though I be a record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go. But you cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. You judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that be witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house for ever, but the son abideth for ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, heareth God's words. 
You therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do not, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to stone, sorry, then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Here ends the reading, beloved. So now we see the envy the Jewish leaders had for Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus did so many miracles by healing all manner of diseases, but this miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead made them go over the edge of envy, so they covenanted to kill Jesus. Here is what happened, quoting the Gospel of John chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus said that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto him, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be Jesus spake of his death? But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went away and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she arose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest, shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees, and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest, that same year said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. But this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think you? that he will not come to the feast. Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. Here ends the chapter. So beloved, this is what led to the passion of the Christ. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, came to die for you and me because we are Jesus' creation and he loves us dearly and tenderly. 
for us. Jesus has much love and compassion, grace and mercy. No one can ever love us like Jesus. His love for us always leads us to repentance. This is why Jesus, the Word, became flesh to dwell among us so we could all be saved by his blood sacrifice. Of course you have to receive it. Let us always remember Jesus was 100% human and 100% sorry, 100% God Almighty, as I have already said so. Jesus said this wonderful promise to us, John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4, quoting, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Wow, beloved, if you live in an old shack or on the streets and you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will have a mansion in heaven that God has prepared for you. If you have buckets of gold and billions of dollars and you have not received Jesus as your Lord, you have nothing but a destination into the terrors of an eternity in the darkest hell. So wake up, you scoffers and mockers, before it is too late. For if you pass away, then it is too late and too late for tears. Beloved, if the Lord Jesus should suddenly appear before you, would you just fall down and worship him? I would. And would we be able to look into his eyes? It would be so holy and amazing. Beloved, remember the woman who came to Jesus and touched just touched his garment and she was instantly healed. What a powerful and majestic and wonderful, kind and holy and awesome is Jesus our Lord. Beloved, come let us adore and reverence and worship and be thankful and praise our wonderful Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, our God. God is so good all the time. There is no God like Yahweh, our God, because there is none besides him. Yahweh, our God, is God, period. Hallelujah. Amen to that. Say amen, beloved. Beloved, here is now the greatest decision. Sorry. Here is now the greatest decision you will ever make which will determine your final destination. So, beloved, I do invite you to pray with me. It is my pleasure to pray with you because I bless and love you all. Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. When you pray, beloved, you have to forgive everyone that has wronged you. Jesus says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith your God. For as Christ has paid a horrendous price for our forgiveness, we must remember, and so then we must forgive and let go. Jesus has promised to take our burdens when we give it all to him. Just trust and obey. Tell Jesus everything, because Jesus will help you. Jesus is always listening for you, because you are precious to him, child of God. Praise God always. Beloved, time to pray now because today is the day of your salvation. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died to save me and I thank you so much. I confess that I'm a sinner, my Lord, and I repent from my sins and I turn to you. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my God. I don't know, Yeshua, everything you created me to be and everything you give me to use in this life, I surrender all to you, my God. Please take total control of me and be in the driver's seat of my life. I do understand that now my body is the temple of God, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Help me to glorify you and exalt you and magnify your holy name and as well be a witness for you. Thank you that I did not need to do anything for my salvation because Yeshua said it is finished. 
freely I've been given. Help me, Lord, to freely give the gospel to others. So, my Lord, because your commandment says that I shall not have any gods before me, I will surely not have anything to idolize. I will not love anything or anybody more than I love you. Once again, what can I say? But thank you so much for loving and saving me from eternal punishment. I now declare that I am a blood-born, sanctified, justified child of the Most High God, and I wear the robe of righteousness in Christ. And so I know, Father God, that when you see me that day, when I surely come to stand before you and see the blood of Yeshua for me, your arms will receive me as your very own child. Father, forever you are my God, and forever I am your child. Jesus, I confess that you are now my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Messiah, and my coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and my God. Jesus, while you were on that cross, you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm so glad that I'm forgiven, and all my praise and thanks is to you, Adonai, Yeshua. You said no man comes unto the Father but by me. Yes, my Lord, I believe there's no other way to the Father. Yeshua, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but by you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, God, the three in one. My God, my God, thank you for receiving me and my prayer of surrender. I know now that my name is written down in glory and that your holy angels are rejoicing in heaven. Help me, Lord, always to glorify your holy and wonderful name. And it is in Yeshua's beautiful, majestic name I pray, Father. Amen, Father. Thank you that for by grace am I saved through faith and that not of myself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest I should boast. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, beloved, and bless the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus said, I will bless those who bless thee and curse them who curse thee. So, beloved, bless the Jewish people. Beloved, my prayer is that after hearing God's word, you are brought closer to Jesus. God honors faith, so faith comes by hearing the word of God. Shalom. Beloved, if you have just prayed, to receive Jesus as your Lord, congratulations. You are part of the family of God. You are the king's kid. Your relationship with Jesus as your Lord will be exciting, satisfying, and so peaceful under his guidance. So, beloved, let God's will be done for you and not your will. Beloved, just surrender all to Jesus. God's will, not our will, is always the best. You will have what God says you can have. You will be what God says you can be. You will do what God says you can do. You will learn how faithful and good God is. Wow, heaven will be your final destination. You will be with Jesus. Beloved, this amazing, kind, compassionate Jesus who died to save you from eternal punishment wants you to spend time with him. How will you spend time with Jesus? Beloved, here is how you read his word every day, then you pray, just talk to Jesus, tell him everything. Jesus will be listening with love and compassion because you are precious to him and he loves you dearly. So you can say, Abba, Father. Now, beloved, when you pray, how shall you come to God? Beloved, you will say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, my Lord. Why? Because Jesus said nobody can come to the Father, only through him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Next, you start praising and thanking and blessing God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Wow, beloved, now you are ready to make your request known to God. God will always listen and answer you. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes no, sometimes not now. God will always do for you what is best and right for you. Don't give up. Pray without ceasing, beloved. Just have the deepest respect and reverence and worship for God. He alone is worthy. There's no God like Jehovah. Yahweh, our God, is God, period. The word of God says, Be still and know that I am God. Beloved, God's goodness will always lead you to repentance. Beloved, I pray that now that Jesus is your Lord and blessed Redeemer, that you will be highly favored 
and that you will have supernatural divine health. Beloved, I know you have divine love. Shabbat shalom and love from Evangelist Glory Marjorie. I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Jonathan Kahn giving the ironic blessing. Adonai Vayishmerecha Yair Adonai Parmelecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Shalom. The Lord bless you, child of God, keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on your life. The Lord pour out the waters of his grace upon every part of your life. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob cause his glory of his presence to fall on you. And the Lord give you shalom, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Messiah Jesus, our hope in his name. And all his people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Here yeah, now is Shireen to play on the strings. God be with you till we meet again. In loving memory of my beloved son and Shireen's brother, Emmanuel Christian, who is sheltered in the arms of Jesus. Praise God. Mm -hmm. 